Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing group isomorphisms. Okay, so we've now discussed the concept of uh, what it means for two groups to be isomorphic to one another, okay? Uh, we've discussed the concept of what an isomorphism actually is, and I've now given you an example of two groups that are not isomorphic to one another, i.e. C4 and the Klein 4 group here. Okay, what I now want to give you is an example of two groups that are isomorphic to one another. And I find the fact that these two groups are isomorphic to one another very deep. Okay, so let me discuss these two groups that are isomorphic to one another, and I'll just get a new piece of paper to do this. Okay, right. Uh, so, the two groups are the real numbers under addition and the positive real numbers under multiplication. Now, before I discuss the fact that they're isomorphic, I just want to discuss the fact that they are groups because we haven't actually looked at them at any point in this uh, playlist so far. Okay, so let's have a look at these groups. So, one of the groups is going to be the entire real numbers under addition. Okay, and often this is written like so. Okay, so you often write groups. Here is the set. Okay, so you put brackets around like this, then you put the set here, and then you put the composition law here, and this is one way of denoting a group, basically. Okay, so you should read this as the real numbers, the set of real numbers under addition. Okay, and together that set with that, this composition law forms an abelian group, as we'll just discuss now. Okay, right. Uh, so, the real numbers. Okay, the real numbers is a massive, massive great set. Okay, containing, you know, all of the integers, all of the rationals, loads of irrational numbers like the square root of 2, uh, the transcendental numbers such as pi. Okay, it contains a huge, huge number of numbers, basically. Okay, so it's a massive great set. Okay, and it has a huge number of incredible things defined on it. So, for instance, you can add any two of these elements together. You can also multiply any two of those elements together. It also has incredible topological properties defined on it. Okay, there's a notion of how close two elements are to one another. Okay, so it's an incredible mathematical structure. However, we're going to forget that it has all of these other fancy things defined on it. We're just going to think of it as a set of symbols with this one composition law defined on it, addition. So forget at the moment that it has all of those other fancy properties. Just think of it as a set of symbols with addition defined on it. And this addition is the normal addition that we're all used to, okay? Right, uh, so let me just uh, go through the argument that that forms a group. So what are the axioms that the composition law needs to obey in order for it to be considered a group? Well, number one was closure. Okay, so if I draw out the composition table here, closure means that if you compose any two real numbers together, you have to get another real number, basically. So if I take an arbitrary little x, which is some real number, and an arbitrary little y, and then I add them together, x plus y, or compose them together, x plus y, I have to get another element that's back in my set. Okay, so hopefully you're familiar with that, that if you add any two uh, real numbers together, you end up with another real number. Okay, so we can tick off closure. Okay, uh, axiom number two is that difficult one, okay? Uh, that's associativity. However, hopefully you are familiar with this as well. Hopefully you're familiar with the fact that if you add together three real numbers, A plus B plus C, where A, B, and C are just arbitrary real numbers, okay, that the answer doesn't matter where you put the brackets, okay? So this is why associativity might have seemed trivial to you when we first defined uh, the notion of composition in a group and said that this was going to be one of the axioms that we wanted it to obey because in all of the classical algebraic structures associativity is true and you might therefore just think of it as a trivial property. Okay, so indeed when we add three elements together in the real numbers, okay, it doesn't matter where you put the brackets. You can put the brackets like that or you can put the brackets like that and the answer is the same. There is one answer for three elements composed together. Okay, so we can tick off associativity, okay? Uh, next up, we need an identity. We need an element that 
adds or composes with any other element on either side to give that arbitrary other element back again. Okay, so our identity is just going to be the element 0. 0 is certainly a real number. Okay, and if we take 0 plus little x, we just end up with little x back again. And if we take little x plus 0, again, we just end up with little x back again. So 0 is our identity, basically. We do have an identity. Okay, uh, and finally, inverses. We need for all elements in our uh, group to have another element which can compose with it to give the identity back again. Okay, so if you take any positive real number, you'll have the negative real number, which if you add that negative real number onto the positive real number, you'll get the identity back again. So for all uh, little x is an element of the real numbers, okay, and that's it's a positive real number. We'll then have negative x, um, which will compose with x to give the identity back again. Okay, in fact, we don't need to insist that x is a uh, positive real number. That's true for whether it's a negative real number, and it's even true where, where if it's zero, basically. Okay, because negative zero is just zero. Okay, so zero would be its own inverse in the case of the identity element. Okay, so intuitively then, the real numbers under addition, it's an incredibly complicated set, but it does obey the axioms of group theory, basically. Okay. Um, in addition, it actually also obeys commutativity. Okay, now that's not an axiom of group theory, uh, but it means that we can call this group an abelian group. So by commutativity, I mean that x composed with y, x plus y is equal to y plus x. That's another uh, property that we think of as intuitively obvious because in our classical algebraic systems, it is true, okay, but we know that in some of the groups that we've been studying up till now, that, that does not hold true. Okay, so the real numbers under addition is in fact an abelian group. Okay, right, so there is uh, one of these groups, okay, now I'm going to discuss the other group that I want to claim this one is isomorphic to. Okay, so I'm now going to discuss the positive real numbers, which I'll denote R plus, like so, under multiplication. Okay, right, so this is now the set of all real numbers that are greater than zero. So R plus is the set containing x is an element of the real numbers, such that x is greater than zero, basically. So it contains all real numbers that are greater than zero, but it does not contain zero, and it does not contain all of the uh, negative numbers either. Okay, now, uh, we're going to define a composition law on this as well, and the composition law this time is going to be the multiplication composition law. Okay, so we're going to use normal multiplication that we have and are familiar with on the real numbers. Okay, and that's going to be our composition law. Now, forget that we have addition, forget that we have topological structure, forget anything else that's defined on this set of positive real numbers. All I care about now is that this is a set of symbols with this composition law multiplication defined on it. Okay, and it's actually going to form a group, and again it's going to be an abelian group. Okay, so let's just talk through why it obeys all of the axioms of group theory. So I have this great big composition table here uh, where my composition is multiplication and I can take any positive real number, let's say little x, and I can compose it with another positive real number y and I'll call the answer x times y or x composed with y like so. Okay, and I'll just write them next to each other to show composition. So let's make sure that this composition law does obey the axioms of group theory. So number one, closure, okay? Is it true that if we uh, multiply any two positive real numbers together that we get another positive real number, i.e. are all the entries in this great composition table in the set, basically? Okay, well yes it is. When you multiply two positive real numbers together, you do get another positive real number. So when you ever you multiply two elements, you will get another element back in our uh, horrendously complicated set here. Okay, uh, so closure is fine. Associativity, again, uh, this is just intuitive. We know from our understanding of how multiplication works that it does not matter whether you, where you put the brackets, basically. If you're considering A times B times C, it doesn't matter if you put the brackets like that or if you put the brackets like that, okay? 
A times B times C has one and only one answer, and it doesn't matter where you put the brackets. So we know from our uh, old understanding of this classical algebraic system that associativity holds true. Okay, so axiom number two is fine. Uh, axiom number three, the identity. Well, the identity is different here. It's no longer zero. Zero isn't even in our set. Again, zero wouldn't multiply by any number to give that number back again anyway. Our identity now is one, basically. One will multiply by any arbitrary real number x to give that arbitrary real number x back again, and it does that on either side, so x times 1 is also equal to little x, and that's for all little x as an element of the positive real numbers. Okay, right, so 1 is going to be our identity, and 1 is certainly going to be in our set because it's a positive real number. Okay, so there's our identity, and inverse elements, okay, if we have any positive real number x, then it will also have its inverse, which will be 1 over x, which it will times with to give back the identity element 1, basically, and that, of course, uh, will work both way around, okay, so if you do it this way around as well, it will also be true. Okay, so for instance, if you take the positive real number 5, you'll also have the other positive real number 1 fifth, and if you multiply those two together, if you compose them on either way around, it'll give you back the identity element, and that's the exact um, axiom that we need to satisfy, basically, that every element has an inverse, a multiplicative inverse. Okay, so all positive real numbers will have another the will it, for all positive numbers, uh, there will exist another positive real number, 1 over x, uh, which will multiply with it to give the multiplicative identity 1. Okay, right. So we do, in fact, obey all of those axioms. And again, we know, of course, that this is an abelian group, okay, because it does not matter what order we multiply two positive real numbers together. Okay, so x composed with y is going to equal y composed with x. Okay, so it is going to be abelian. Okay, right, so those are the two groups that I'm interested in. The whole of the real numbers under this composition law addition and the positive real numbers under this composition law multiplication. Okay, now, my claim is that these two groups are actually isomorphic to one another, that there is no more truth in studying one than studying the other. They are the same algebraic structure. And I, for one, find that very, very deep, okay, because we think of addition and multiplication in very different ways, okay, but their actual algebraic structure when it comes down to it, is the same, and I found that very deep when I first um, uh, learned that. Okay, so, what do I need to do then to show you that these two groups are isomorphic? Well, we have the answer ready. I need to give you an isomorphism. I need to give you a mapping which will map uh, my first one here, the real numbers under addition, onto my second one here, the positive real numbers under multiplication, which is a relabeling mapping that obeys that criterion, that it conserves the composition law, basically. Okay, right. So let's call uh, the real numbers under addition G. So I'm going to call this group up here G. Okay, and let's call this group down here the positive real numbers under multiplication G prime. So I am now going to set up a bijective map from G to G prime. So what bijective map can I actually come up with? What is the isomorphism that I can come up with? Okay, well, an isomorphism that I can come up with is the mapping phi, which carries any real number x, which is an element of G, okay, which, remember, is this group of all real numbers under addition, and it will carry it onto e to the power of x. Okay, now, the first thing I want to establish is that that is a bijective map, okay, and then I want to show you that that obeys that criterion that we said uh, amounts to uh, the composition table being conserved, basically. Okay, right, so how can I show you that that's a bijective map? Well, the easiest way is just to draw out the graph of what e to the x looks like. Okay, so here we are. Here are the positive real numbers up here. Here are the negative real numbers down here. And here is the, uh, the codomain here, where we're mapping our uh, real numbers onto. And of course, this mapping always takes any real number onto a positive real number, which is why I don't need to even bother putting the negative real numbers here. Okay, and e to the x's graph looks like this, remember. 
Okay, and it will go on and on up there. So, zero, the real number zero, when we map uh, zero onto its um, analogous term, it will go on to one. So, e to the power of zero is one. So, here is one here. All of the negative numbers, they'll go on to a positive real number less than one, but greater than zero. Okay, so no, no negative number will be mapped onto zero. There is no answer to what the natural logarithm of zero is. So there is no uh, negative real number that you can actually stick into this and take e to the power of that negative number and get zero, basically. Okay, so whenever, whatever real number you put into this, you will get a positive real number, basically. So this is looking very good. Okay, we are mapping all of the real numbers onto the positive real numbers. Every positive real number will get one and only one real number being mapped onto it. So this is a beautiful bijection between these two sets, basically. Okay, so that's excellent. In addition, what we've got that is nice is that our identity in the first group, which is zero, okay, is being mapped onto the identity in the second group, which is one. So that's looking hopeful, basically. So we've now got this bijection, which is just renabling all of the symbols in my first group with a symbol in the second group. Now what I need to do is show you that if you renable up the composition table, it will um, turn the composition table into the composition table in G prime. So if I relabel my composition table of G, it will turn it into the composition table of G prime. And remember what the equivalent condition is. What you have to prove is that phi of x composed with y, where x and y are arbitrary elements of, whoops, I'll just have to put y x now, uh, x and y are arbitrary elements of g, okay, so this needs to hold for all uh, y and x are elements of g, we need to show that phi of x composed with y is equal to phi of x composed with phi of y. Okay, where this composition here is the composition in g, and this composition here is the composition in g prime. Okay, so I might as well fill these in with what they are, because composition in G, remember, is addition, and composition within G prime is multiplication. So really what this says is that phi of x plus y, and I'll just make sure this is in view, okay, uh, needs to equal phi of x times phi of y, and I'll just write them next to each other for times, okay, and this needs to hold for all little x and little y are elements of the real numbers, basically, okay, because uh, those are what x and y can vary over in g, basically. Okay, now let me just fill in phi with what it actually is, okay, so what I'll get here is that e to the power of x plus y needs to equal e to the power of x times e to the power of y for all x and y is an element of the real numbers. But of course, we know that that's true from, you know, taking calculus class. Uh, that's the um, um, basic law of how exponentials work. When you take e to the power of x plus y, that is equal to e to the power of x times e to the power of y. And that works whatever x and whatever y you put in that is an element of the real numbers. Okay, so that automatically is true, basically, for all x and y. Okay, so what I have just shown you is that I can use this as a relabeling to relabel up all of the real numbers in my uh, group G here with a positive real number in my group G prime. And when I do this, and I apply this to the great composition table on G, if I apply this to the great composition table here, okay, it will turn it into the composition table here. It really does do that. It really does work. Okay, so by just relabeling up this group here with different symbols, okay, I can turn it into this group here, okay? They are capturing the exact same algebraic structure. And as I say, I find that very deep because we think of addition and multiplication as being very different things, but the algebraic structure of them is exactly the same. It's isomorphic, okay? So I found that very deep when I first learnt it. Okay, right, so that now uh, concludes our discussion of group isomorphisms.